Hey guys, Bobby Thompson back with another video and in this video what we're going to talk about is yet another problem with eclipses that contradict the heliocentric model. So I was doing some research in a video uh, yesterday that I called uh, titled the macro versus the micro and I came across um, something I'd seen before but hadn't given much thought to um, and uh, before we talk about it I'm gonna we're gonna need some measurements so we can add some context to this uh, observation. The diameter of the moon, according to mainstream science, is 2,159 miles, and the diameter of Earth is 7,971 miles. Uh, with that data, we can do a little bit of math, and we know that the moon's diameter fits 3.7 times across the diameter of the Earth. So don't think too much about that. Keep it in the back of your head. Let's, uh, let's now take that and look at this uh, video from APOD videos, which uh, this is a scale representation of the moon transiting the Earth's umbra. Okay. Another thing I want you to notice that it, this isn't the point of this video, but uh, it was something I was talking about in the last video. It's, here it is entering the umbra. Notice if you see any distortion with the shape. Of this shadow. Now this is crossing, this is traversing a sphere, right? And we know that if you cast any shadow or cast any image, cast any shadow image, anything on a sphere, it should distort, right? This was, I, I talked about this in my previous video, the macro versus the micro, and you see absolutely zero distortion. It, the, the umbra is cast as if it's being cast on a flat surface, zero distortion. <clears throat> but that cannot be produced in real life. There's no earthly um, experiment we can do to, to have a perfect um, circular shadow cast on a sphere. Um, all right, so that said, <clears throat> let's move on. I, I used the, that video um, and, and scaled a moon to the size of the moon they were using and placed it on this background with their scale um, representation of the umbra. And I didn't even make them touch. So uh, this, again, this is rough. This is roughly, a, give or take, 2.75 moons uh, fit across the Earth's umbra. So what does that mean? If 3.7 moons is equivalent to the diameter of the Earth, then 2.75 moons is the equivalent to 74.3% of the Earth's diameter. So what happened is that the Earth's diameter, um, it, the umbra in relation to the Earth's diameter, reduced only 25.7%. Okay, so that's a small reduction. It didn't reduce very much. But now let's... Let's look at the reduction during a solar eclipse. And this is from uh, 2017. I took this from CBS Sunday morning, although you can find this video, many videos like it all over the internet. Ready or not, here it comes. Eight days from today, for the first time in 99 years, a solar eclipse will cross the entire continental United States. Its path of totality from Oregon to South Carolina, approximately 70 miles wide. All right, so what kind of reduction do we see? And, and that path of totality is the umbra, right? So we have the moon, which is 2,160 miles or 2,159 across. That's the diameter. And it reduces to 70 miles. Now, that's a 97% reduction. Um, a 97% reduction during uh, a lunar eclipse. Or sorry, that'd be a solar eclipse, sorry. So when, when the sun or when the moon eclipse, um, eclipses the sun, uh, we have a solar eclipse and, and we, end, we end up with this tiny, tiny umbra that is 3% of the diameter of the moon. A, a, you know, that's a 97% reduction. Now, keep in mind, this isn't scale. Uh, the moon, uh, the, the, the earth fits according to whichever source you find, anywhere from 1 million to 1.3 million times in the sun. So the size of the sun would be absolutely immense if it were sitting to the left of your monitor. You may have to stack up 10,000 monitors. I don't know, I'm just throwing that number out there, but it, I wouldn't doubt it if it were more. Um, so <clears throat> I think it would be. And the sun is 
unfathomably far away. And my point with that is that if we reverse these two, these angles shouldn't change very much because both the Earth and the Moon are minuscule. They're just dots if you put them next to the Sun. So you're not changing this drastically that would change these angles. These are both just tiny, tiny dots next to the Sun. So why is it that when the Earth is casting its shadow on the Moon, um, we only get a 20, roughly a 26% reduction? That's a, that's a very that's a, that's a very small reduction, and when the moon is casting its shadow, its umbra on the Earth, we get a 97% reduction. So to summarize that, during a solar eclipse, the moon's umbra reduces to 3.2% of its diameter, from 2160 miles to 70 miles. But during a lunar eclipse, the Earth's umbra reduces to 74.3% of its diameter from 7971 miles to roughly 5937 miles. So in summary, um, a solar eclipse produces a 97% reduction of the moon's diameter, but a lunar eclipse only, only produces a 26% uh, reduction of the Earth's diameter. Why is that? That, that doesn't it doesn't make much sense to me. Um, so just something for you to think about. Personally, I think that's a contradiction to the heliocentric model. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one. Take care.